What's up, guys? Today we have a very exciting podcast with Alex, James, and myself. We talk about the FTX scandal, some conspiracies around that, and as well, we talk about our overall trading and the overall market. Uh, so stay tuned in. This is a super, super good one, and enjoy. Cheers, guys. What's up, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today we have a huge topic to talk about. Everyone in like the trading world, the crypto world, this has kind of been like the main thing going on, uh, and it's this whole FTX scandal. Uh, so Alex wanted to come on and kind of talk about it a little bit. So yeah, Alex, so I mean, one? this is some crazy stuff, man. So I know there's a lot of videos out there. I know there's a lot of people talking about it, but I kind of want to give you guys what happened from a trader's perspective and what kind of the reality of the situation is. So. The way you have to think about it is FTX, if you want to kind of compare it to the real world, is like a bank. So it's like a Bank of America. So you store your money in Bank of America and they give you a certain interest rate. And then what the bank does is they take that money, they lend it out in like a mortgage, and that's how they make their nut, right? But what FTX was doing is they were taking your money, they were lending it out to a hedge fund run by FTX's CEO, call him SBF for short, run by SBF's girlfriend okay and that and what they ended up doing is they ended up leveraging that money so they borrowed against it so let's say they had 10 billion dollars that they lent to the hedge fund the hedge fund borrowed against it 40 billion or whatever the hell the number is we don't know yet and then started gambling on random things and pretty much lost all the money that's it's like they lost all the money there's articles coming out every single day that they use customer funds to buy penthouses in the bahamas they use customer funds to you know, uh, get the naming rights of the FTX stadium in Miami. And it was basically a big scheme because sure, banks do the same thing. They take your money, they lend it out, but they don't lend it out and, you know, try to uh, invest in bankrupt companies. They don't do it, to do all this crazy stuff. So the backstory is there was an article that came out. I think it was on Coindesk. And the article said that FTX and this hedge fund, Almeida, Alameda, Alameda, whatever, are more related than people think. Then what people have to keep in mind is FTX is the number two exchange. The number one exchange, Binance, then came out and said, you know what? We have a stake in FTX. We're just going to sell our stake. We don't want any part of this. The rumor is that FTX was going behind the scenes to the U.S. government and lobbying them, which is basically legally bribing them to create laws and rules that would favor FTX and not favor Binance, right? So they found out that this was also happening and they said, you know what, we don't want any part of some guy that's trying to cheat us or trying to scheme us. So whatever stake we have in FTX, because Binance is an early investor, we're gonna sell it on the open market. Now, if you bring in so much supply into the market, basic economics says, if there's elevated supply and no demand, Price goes down. So Alameda, the hedge fund that knew this, said, you know, no, 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 don't sell it on the open market. We'll privately buy it from you at $22 a coin. And Binance is like, nah, I'm going to sell it on the open market, right? I'm going to sell it on the open market. This guy's sure. smart. He knows that if he sells it on the open market, they're screwed. Yeah. So that day that that happened, FTX had $6 billion in withdrawals, right? Because people are like, wait, what the hell? If the number one cryptocurrency Binance is selling, why the hell am I going to keep my money in there? So what ended up happening is the next day, Binance comes out and says, FTX reached out to us because they have severe liquidity issues, which means that they cannot fund the deposits. So we've decided to send them a non-binding letter of intent to purchase the company. So all of a sudden, in 24 hours, the number one crypto company was going to buy the number two crypto company for pennies on the dollar. I think the day after that, they came out and said, we looked at the numbers and there's no hope for this company. We're not going to buy it anymore. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, that's when hell broke loose. That's when they halted withdrawals. That's when they had a bank run. And then you find out that this guy, SBF, that was worth $16 billion yesterday is now worth zero. His $30 billion company, FTX, is now worth fucking zero. And all these big investors, all these big hedge funds lost all their money. And anyone that had money in FTX, whether they thought it was safe or not, is all gone. Now, the craziest part about this is now it's cascading to other companies and other exchanges, other banks that have had a lot of um, 
they've had a lot of exposure to FTX. And now because of that, they're also going bankrupt. So as we're recording this now, BlockFi just went fucking bankrupt. I think I saw something else. Uh, another company. Genesis. Starts, yeah, Genesis is going bankrupt. So you, we don't know how crazy the scheme is and what's been going on. But the truth of the matter is there's so many conspiracies behind this. I mean, you know, because crypto is unregulated, they're able to leverage the money like crazy. In 2008, when, you know, that whole thing happened, that was because the banks leveraged so much money that you didn't know how much risk was in the system. So they then they then got regulated. So instead of leveraging a dollar to a thousand dollars, they're only allowed to leverage a dollar to like ten dollars, which is still crazy, but whatever, whatever it is. So that's number one, right? Number one is all of a sudden this very ethical, this guy was on Forbes as the next Warren Buffett. He was at all the JP Morgan conferences. He was a major political donor to the Democrats in the midterms. I think he donated number two. Yeah, yeah. And they they said that he was um he promised to donate about a billion dollars for the next presidential election. So this guy was clean cut from what it seemed. And the reality was they had no money. They were taking customer funds and spending it. And now the question is, what other exchanges next? Because, I mean, look, a lot of these crypto exchanges, they make money from fees. Okay, let's say you make a billion dollars from fees. That's pretty good money. But what ends up happening is a billion is not enough. You take that money, you give it to your sister hedge fund. They start fucking gambling and day trading, whatever mm -hmm. coins are trading. And then all of a sudden you find out that they lost it all. They lost it all. It's all gone. So now this opens up the big conspiracy theories, which is where was the SEC? Apparently SBF's girlfriend's father was the ex-boss of the chairman of the SEC why isn't this guy arrested in jail yet? Is it because he donated so much money to the Democrats? You know, who's next? What's going on? So, I mean, in a perspective of reality in terms of what's going on, I mean, I think this is exactly what the Federal Reserve wants to do. They didn't want to crash FTX, but they want to slowly get people to realize that all these, because what they would do in the past is if interest rates were at zero and customers want to withdraw funds, they just borrow the fucking money. They just borrow it. Now yeah. when interest rates are fucking five, six, seven, eight percent, bro, you borrow the money. You're fucking, you're on the line for, you know, tens of millions of dollars a month that they don't have, you know? That's so cool. the whole situation is screwed up. I mean, what I was mentioning to James and Harry, what I did is I have coins in the exchange. I just bought this. Uh, it's a ledger. It's basically a cold storage device. So it takes your money out of these exchanges. So instead of keeping your money in a bank, which is an exchange and earning interest on it, if you keep it on this, you know, little USB stick, uh, keeps in cold storage. And that basically means that uh, you're stuffing your money under the mattress. You're burying it in the backyard so that in case another bank goes under and they were using your money to fund their orgies, uh yeah, you'll, they're cheese, bro. you'll be protected you'll be protected so what do you guys think about this whole situation like from your perspective i mean i mean i tried to give a very brief overview so that people don't yeah. get bored but what do you guys think and i think i just think it's absolutely crazy and the problem is now like from people i've talked to <clears throat> is people have even less of a confidence in crypto now um i think that people are scared because you know F i mean ftx was huge and i think a lot of people don't they were number two they, bro they were number they, two yeah. huge and to see someone like that just crater and like the people who have money in there, they're stuck. I mean, I, I've met a lot of people already who just, they can't get their funds. They got nothing. So, yeah. you know, I think it just scares the shit out of people. And I think it makes people wonder like, does crypto need regulation? And the problem is like, that was kind of like the opposite intent of crypto. And, you know, it's just sketchy, right? Cause you see all these celebrities endorsing FTX. You got Tom Brady, you got Larry David, you got all these guys endorsing it. And now it just seems like a big scam. So I don't know, man. It's like, it's, it's just wild. I don't even, honestly, it, it, I feel like we're just kind of starting the, like you said, the cascading effect and, and we'll see what kind of happens. Yeah. To me and, and like, as far as like trading, the last time I heard like a crazy story about like a, like brokerage or exchange was like that whole, uh, uh, sure trader thing with like guy yeah. deal. That was the last time I heard something like, crazy as far as like conspiracy theory goes and um yeah i just think that it's absolutely wild like number two exchange all of a sudden everything's gone and as far as like 
the house, 10 people living together, all involved romantically. She's going on podcasts saying, oh, trading's easy. I'm not going to talk about losses. I don't use stop losses. Like right there is like a complete red flag. And she's like, uh, I'm not going to go over any trades where I lost a ton of money. So I was like, holy shit. How is this guy not arrested, bro? I fu- If I go to the Rolex store and I steal a Rolex. They're putting me in jail. That's goddamn Rolex. This is yeah. 10, 20 billion dollars. And the guy's just <clears throat> chilling. I mean, look, I mean, I there's definitely a lot of corruption going on in the world, but this is just it's so mainstream. It's so in everyone's face. And the reality is nothing's being done about it, bro. What the hell? Yeah, well, it's the same thing, like uh you know, like Epstein, they didn't have the, the cameras on or whatever. <laughs> now this dude's just running around in plain sight. And also, like, I also read that, like, uh, Ukraine, like, had money in FTX as well. So, like, was the United States government sending money to Ukraine? Ukraine was putting it in FTX. FTX yeah, that's like, another wandering conspiracy it back. theory. The conspiracy theory is that Joe Biden is sending billions of dollars a week to Ukraine. Ukraine has a little bit of a stake in FTX. So are they clipping off 10%, sending it yeah. to FTX? FTX is sending it back to the Democrats. In the yeah, nation. exactly. So, I, mean, I mean, it's crazy, bro. Dude, it probably just, it probably on. goes so deep. It probably goes like I I'm still waiting. Like obviously everybody uses like major exchanges like Coinbase and stuff. And like so far they've done a good job of like staying out of any issues. But yeah. like imagine if we see like some major company like that because that's like the average person's like exchange that people use is Coinbase, right? Yeah. And like I don't know. I mean Bitcoin's already taken a huge beating. Every all the all these altcoins and stuff, dude. Like these things could tank. These things could all just crater. And we don't yeah, know. It's I mean, crazy, we have no bro. idea, you know, it's and crazy. it's going to be weird to see. But I think it's funny that a lot of these guys now are like begging for regulation in the government after they've taken like a massive haircut. But, you know, before they were like all these celebrities, everybody was super happy about crypto and everything because just making yeah, a ton of money. Don't, no ask, don't ask, don't tell, bro. If someone <laughs> comes to you and says, hey, we have this company called FTX, I'm going to pay you $10 million a year just to say that we're the best. I mean, I don't know about you, bro, but I'm not going to watch due diligence at that point, you know, and that's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, yep. exactly. And, and Kevin what... O'Leary as well. Uh, yeah. All of them, bro. All of them. Everyone. This was... Kevin came out though and said he, he's like, oh yeah, I'd still endorse this guy. You know, if he started another company, and it's like, you know oh, why? He probably has money stuck in there, and he doesn't. He wants to try to save it in whatever way yeah. that he can. You know. Yeah, that's he terrible. Was, he was saying that that was like he's like the number one place I'm not going to get in trouble is FTX. Um, he was a big believer, and now he's. Like before he was like, oh, like we don't need regulation. We don't need any regulation. Now he's like, oh, we need regulation. We need regulation. And he was also talking about before the, um, I don't know, like he was on CNBC and he's like, you know, in order to get out of this recession, one company has to go to zero. And ironically, it ended up being the company that he was marketing the hardest. So yeah. um, it's kind of funny that uh, yeah. and also I mean- Tom Brady, Tom Brady too. Yeah, dude, the reality is this guy, like, bamboozled, like, the world. Like Alex said, he was on Forbes. They were calling him Warren Buffett. I mean, Bro, the, the only fucking thing that compares this is Bernie Madoff, the, the chairman of the NASDAQ, the most uh, recognizable, famous guy that made so much returns nonstop. And you think to yourself, I was actually watching a documentary on it the other day, and apparently they were saying, oh, like, Oh, Bernie was like the best, you know, he would make 16% a year at minimum, you know, the returns were crazy. And he had one rule. If you ever would like uh, pulled your money out of the fund, you would never be able to get back into the fund. You know what I'm saying? So his scam was really deep. And the the reality is that like Madoff was very famous. He was very prestigious. He was the chairman of the NASDAQ. Imagine the chairman of the NASDAQ is a scammer. The fuck? I mean, you got it. It's really crazy. So, and I think um, another example is like Enron, right? Enron was a big accounting fraud. I think Enron's scam was, I think, like they scammed like 50 to 70 billion dollars. Yep. And FTX is anywhere between 10 to 50. So, this might be the second biggest scam in history. Did you guys see yeah. they, they hired the, um, it was like the new CEO was someone who like did the. the he was the ex liquidator of Enron. Yeah, and he said he looked at these books of FTX and was like, "Holy fuck!" Like he said, he's never seen anything like this, and that's Enron, and that's like 
one of the biggest scandals of all time. He and said, never in my career have I seen such a complete failure of corporate controls and such a complete absence of trustworthy financial information that has occurred here. And Sam Bankman, he got, to the, he got to the top of the top. Like, again, he was political, uh, political influence. He was... Then his name was on the fucking stadium for who is the Warriors? Miami, that, Miami, Miami, Heat. Miami Heat. Like insane shit. And like, I mean, that's like, I don't know if you guys saw that Netflix show, like Inventing Anna. It's like the yeah. same idea, man. Like this guy just somehow scammed enough people into giving them enough money and promising returns and promising X, Y, and Z. And like, look what it and got. And the reality is, bro, if the Fed didn't raise the interest rates, if the entire crypto market didn't crash, they would just kept scamming and scamming because that's what happened to yeah. Madoff. What happened to Madoff is, I think it was 2000, 2000, 2007, 2008, when shit started to hit the fan and Klein started to withdraw. That's when they started to say, oh, wait, there's actually no money in here. And I don't know if this is true because like some, some shit is real, some shit is fake. Apparently, apparently, what Madoff would do, like he was saying, oh, you make 16% returns, you make 20% returns. What he was doing, but I don't know if it was true or not, but the rumor is that he took all the money that people were giving him, he put it into a JP Morgan account, earning 4% a year interest, and that was it. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's all he did. That's so hilarious. the problem is when everyone starts to withdraw their money and they were promised 20% returns every year, a $5 million account is now $8 million. Well, in reality, it's only fucking $5.5 and, and you can't get the entire redemption. I wonder, though, like, you know, like you said with the Federal Reserve, and this is, like, kind of what they wanted, but – you know, it's almost like they're sucking like fake money out. Like, cause a lot of money's gone. A lot of crypto yeah. is gone now that people lost. Forget and, crypto, bro. Money, period. Money, bro. yeah, period. money. And and I wonder if that was like, I mean, it's the goal. But think about like the top of the crypto craze, right? Like, people were buying board apes for like ten million dollars, yeah. or like crazy shit. So like that was. This is almost like a reset. I think. I think it's almost like a slap in the face to everyone who just made a shit ton of money and now it's a lot of it's just fucking It's gone. definitely the great reset is what's happening. And what I think is yeah. gonna happen, bro, is it may sound conspiracy theory, but like I think the Fed is trying to crash the market and crash everything so hard that like let's say an example like a, a company like uh random example, Uber goes bankrupt. Yep. You find out that Uber has too much debt there, can't make money, they go bankrupt, all of a sudden the Federal Reserve is gonna say, Oh shit, like We'll fix it. We'll give you guys money and we'll fix it. We'll break, we'll uh, lower the interest rates. We'll do another stimulus and we'll just keep it going because we'll save you this time. I know okay. we tried to fix the market. We did as best as we could. We're going to save you this time. Don't worry. We got you. We have the tools to do it. We did it during COVID. We'll save you. I think they're just going to keep fucking going until something breaks. I think FTX did break, Harry, but I think that they don't give a shit about FTX. Yeah, I think they so too. The USA company to break. And when the yeah. USA company breaks, they're going to say, We'll save you. That's yeah, I think crazy. so too. <laughs> That's oh, terrible. I was just, just going to say that um, I, I agree with you 100% because it's not really close enough to home, if it makes any sense. Like it is, but it's not really because like everyone just looks at crypto like, oh, it's gambling. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. If something like fucking, I don't know, Walmart went bankrupt, that would be a real fucking problem. They want something, bro. They want something to go bust. And then when something goes bust, then they have the reason to reverse their course. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. It's sure if inflation goes down the way it's going to go down and what people think. And, you know, the next inflation, if the next infl inflation report is low, market is going to fucking go ape shit. If it's high, we're going right back down. So the next one, this one was important. The next one I think is going to be even more important. So that's, that's going to be key. But it's crazy. You do we rip on 7.7. .7. It's like, yeah, that's good news and all, but like still fucking 7.7%. Right, inflation <laughs> normally, normally is supposed to be 3 to 4%. Like that's like normal, you know, like inflation is not something that's ever going to be zero. It's impossible. So 3 to 4, 3 to 4% 4 is average. So yeah, we're double the average, which is horrible. But like as long as it starts to trend lower, then it's going to bring confidence back. And hey, man, this is, it's definitely some crazy times out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I still think we need like, some major news headline to like actually change the course of everything. Like, like you said, either something's got to break or, you know, like the war's got to end or something, but like, we're just bouncing around. And like, dude, if you listen to like all these major guys talking, like all the, the old hedge fund guys and who are now like retired or whatever, but they're all saying like, 
we could be in for like five years of just like nothing of just like slow no return kind of market i think also know? the problem is bro everyone is saying <clears throat> that the market is going to keep crashing and we've crashed a lot you know certain stocks are down 50 to 70 percent you got Tesla down 50%. You got Apple down 30%. You got Meta down 70%. You got like shit like NVIDIA down 70%. So we're down a lot. And people are like, oh, we're going to keep going lower, keep going lower, keep going lower. I think it, usually what happens in the market is everyone says the same thing. The opposite is going to fucking happen. You know, the opposite is going to happen. So if everyone is saying that, you know, the market's going to keep crashing, 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 then the opposite is going to happen. And, you know, we're going to reverse. So, I mean, I don't know what the reality is. I know that there's going to be certain companies that make a lot of money during this. I mean, if you look at cer like certain charts, like oil, energy, solar has all been going crazy because there's an energy crisis in Europe. But aside from that, I mean, this is going to really weed out the companies that don't really make money. Yeah. Do you guys imagine if like Meta went bankrupt? Like if that was like the company that just fucking broke? Like you look at the, I just look at the daily chart, like just fucking insane to see like what, some of these major companies have become and like obviously like if you guys look at like even netflix right like how much money are people down on some of these stocks is fucking yeah. insane or yeah. bro think about zoom Moderna, oh fucking all this shit bro all this shit so oh there's a lot God. of roku uh, there's a lot of dead money out there bro and these stocks are never coming back like if Roku ever hits four hundred dollars again, I'll fucking marry you, James. But it's just never gonna happen. Right? <laughs> I hope it goes. Never I hope it goes. I'll be Man, do you remember Peloton when everyone was <laughs> talking about yeah. that Peloton thing? You guys, yeah, yeah. everyone that wanted a Peloton bought it during the fucking pandemic. There's no one that wants it anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Again, no. I I feel like this is one of those like needed things that sounds so fucked, but like as bad as things are, dude. Like I was just having this conversation at dinner the other night, like. The world got so ahead of itself. Like, like Alex, you went down to Miami a lot during like, like COVID times. And like, you saw the crazy money people were spending, yeah. the crazy shit people were buying. Like, dude, you go to like the Louis Vuitton store and people are fucking just buying everything. And it's like, I uh, think they're just lining up out the door to spend money. Yeah. Dude. I yeah. mean, again, I, I always go back to the crypto shit. Like, people were buying NFTs with zero value for millions of dollars, if not thousands. And look at them now. They're down 90%. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, that's how far we got. I mean, people were doing the dumbest shit. I saw some dude iced out a board eight necklace. Like at this thing. And it's like, he paid like $11 million, something stupid like that. And it's just, again, I think we just, everything got too far. The and reality is, bro, this shit needed to happen. If we want another 10 year bull cycle, we're going to have to have two years of hell cycle, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, it, it's funny though. Like I've, even through all of this stuff though, we're all still able to like make money in the market, which is nice. Like, I mean, that's like, we're very lucky. I'm going to like knock on wood here, but like, that's basically it. Like, that's, what's crazy. It's like as bad as things are, we're all still doing pretty. All right. Yeah. I mean, what the pandemic taught me, bro, is that when the entire world is <laughs> shut down, when there's no way to make money, when everyone is out of business, the one business that remained constant is the stock market. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. hundred percent. 100%. And I feel like we're starting to finally get some like momentum back into like small and mid cap stocks and stuff like that. Um, I don't know what's changed. I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you. I don't know if it's just the end of the year or whatever. Um, but I don't know. Like, how are things going for you guys? We can kind of at least transition a little quick to that if you want. How have things been for you the last couple of weeks, Harry? Uh, to me, it's still pretty slow, to be honest. I mean, I know it's picked up for a lot of you guys, but for me, it's like when you look like at like the stocks that went up, like as far as like, quality um i mean for me it's been like you know still pretty slow like i've had a couple like nice trades like i got dwac that other one um but like i'm also very picky um as well like i think alex nailed the only fucking good long trade this week which was oh, yeah, about that. he yeah. fucking nailed that <laughs> I woke up and, I was and then that like, i think that same day austin nailed dwac short <laughs> Yeah, I know. And I, I woke up and I was like, what the fuck is this dude Must doing in a fucking long position? I was like, there's no way I'm fucking logging this stock, man. <laughs> and the thing fucking goes to the moon. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah, man. But aside from that, if you realize the when the market turned is when CPI went down, the market ripped up. So yeah. a lot of our uh, runners are based on the overall market doing well. Because if the overall market does well, people are willing to speculate on these junk stocks. It's true. Alex, you've been doing really well. Like these last I've couple been of right. weeks. Like, I've yeah. been all right, bro. I've been doing Things all right. are going I can, good. 
yeah, I could be doing better, bro, with a couple first red days in there, but just trying to take it slow, bro. What can I do? I mean, you know, last year we're all making 10, 20, $30,000 a day. And now we're making fucking $10 a day. So what can we do? Yeah. No. Yeah. We're all just going to stay the, stay the course and that's it, right? It's just. It, it, I find they're like as well, like really choppy on the way down. Like DWAC, like that was pretty choppy on the way down that day that are like really tanked. Like yeah. that was pretty choppy. Yeah. You know? It was not easy, bro. It was not easy. No, yeah. like I, I remember like like some other first red days where I was like, holy shit, like that's insane. And then DWAC was just like, oh, I'm going to go like red to green. I'm going to like every single trick in the book. I was like, holy yeah. shit, like difficult, difficult one to to trade for sure. Um, yeah. And they're choppy on the way up too. Like I find a lot of people are really short bias. So like every stock now that's at least going up unless it has like a ton of volume like EPIX did, but like if it doesn't, it feels like the stock is on SSR where we just get this like burst up and then like right back down. And then that burst up and like right back down. I yeah. To me, it feels like there's just like, it's overcrowded with shorts, but shorts are so confident that we're not getting these insane squeezes higher. It's just like chop, 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 chop. Yeah. Chop. Where well, let's, let's hope into the end of the year, things kind of smooth out and level out and, you know, give us some decent range because, man, I miss it. <laughs> I miss it terribly. Yeah, Rob is making money too. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> but no, that's it. I mean, you know, I think as hopefully the market kind of just like, I think like the panic and all that stuff is like slowly kind of like coming out of the large caps. Like people are obviously, we've had so much worry this whole time. So like, it's nice to at least see some people coming back to like small caps and stuff like that. And I'm starting to get people asking about trading again, which is kind of a signal to me that like people might be kind of slowly coming back into like this, this world that we do yeah and i think i think crypto's done for a little bit now like people have really like lost confidence in bitcoin maybe it's a good time to buy now that everyone's exactly in. when everyone hates it bro that's when you're supposed to buy it yeah yeah Literally. maybe it's a good time to buy now but um, yeah, put it in the fucking cold storage bro yeah, yeah, put it in the cold store let me fucking block their name they're not paying us fuck them <laughs> cold, have it in cold storage guys that's the only way that's the only way to store it yeah cool yeah. well I mean, yeah. I mean, well, I guess obviously like next week we'll see, I'm sure. But that by the next time we do the next episode, there will be some crazy news. Hopefully some crazy <laughs> fucking company goes under some crazy shit. So yeah, we'll see, bro. We'll see. We'll see. In the meantime, yeah. thanks guys. It was awesome. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Later thanks. guys. Perfect.